Every market presents its unique challenges. Um, we know that for 25 years, 30 years, people have been talking about infrastructure in Newark and locationally. In fact, the Puritans settled here 400 years ago because of its location. So that hasn't changed for a very long time. We know that um, the city suffered and has come back. What do we know recently? We know that recently um, that if you build a performing arts center, people will come here. You know that if you expand the schools here, people will attend them and people will fill the dorms if you build them. We know that if you build an arena, that people will come to it and have record attendance. You know that in our instance, that if you build an apartment building that's a pioneering project, that people will move here. So you, when you're here and you're experiencing it, you see the potential that the city has. As I mentioned, each market has its challenges. I think the one challenge that um, I didn't catch all of the speakers before me, but the number one challenge that's facing this market right now is what we're all confronted with on a daily basis, both personally and professionally, which is the liquidity crisis. Um, right now, regardless of whether you're in New York City, whether you're in Boston, Newark, it doesn't matter, there's a complete dearth of financing. So even if we all at this panel and the panels before this wanted to build right now. It would be very difficult. But with that, there is also the opportunity to plan. And one of the sayings in our business is you plan during a downturn and you build during an upturn. It's really not fortunate if you go the other way around. So this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us that are, that are planning the next phases of development here to work with people from the state, to work with um, both the public and private sector, to put together the pieces that will be necessary so that when the economy does start again, we're able to hit the ground running. Um, as I mentioned, there is no question that if you build it, whether it's an arena, whether it's a performing arts center, whether it's the schools, whether it's dorms, whether it's housing, they will come. In my opinion, on the corporate side, the corporate side won't fully, fully take advantage of this market and the locational benefits until we establish a residential base. It will be a very, very easy sell from a corporate perspective. If you could walk out of this building, saw 10 buildings outside, if you saw Carl's building, you saw the buildings um, across on um, Broad Street, if you saw a development there and you had three, 4,000 people living there, it'd be a very easy sell to tell to, for a corporation to come here and understand why people are here. So I think that you know, for the, this particular phase of the market, it's this, we've s established the precedent for Newark that it'll work. And now it's the plan so that we can take advantage of the next cycle. Glenn, you can, that's all well and good, but haven't uh, the recent cases and the uh, proposed legislation really made redevelopment a tool of the past? in the land use arena, that redevelopment is far from dead, as, as Doug is talking about. It, it, it is very much alive as long as you do the good, hard work that's necessary to kick it off. I mean, those of us who do development all the time, and there's a lot of experience up here because I've, I've run into lots of these people in lots of different venues. If you actually look at it, and you, you do the planning ahead of time so it doesn't become just the mere incantations of, oh, it's a wonderful thing, or oh, it's a blighted area. Courts are gonna say, you better not be saying that. You better do the good, hard study with your professional team before you embark upon that. Courts have been saying, listen, if you're gonna do it, and you've done all those good, hard studies, you better also make sure that you tell the world what it is that you wanna do. You better notice everybody, because if somebody doesn't know what's going on next door, they're gonna rear their heads, and then you're gonna get in the litigation that Doug just talked about. If after you even do that, and you begin to integrate all of your plans, and all of your studies, and everything else, there's still additional homework that needs to be done. And that's where you need the good professional team to really get out there and help you to make sure that your redevelopment plan becomes consistent with the redeveloper agreement that you're doing, <laughs> that then in turn becomes consistent with the master plan documents and with the zoning, and allows you to go ahead and do the planned unit development and all of those big grand tools that exist in the community. If you don't look at those, 
I think you have enormous problems. And I think you wind up, as we used to say, living in Hudson County, the ball hit the wire when you were playing in the street. It was a do-over. And the last thing anybody wants is to have a do-over. So if, if you do the planning and, and you get everything integrated, I think it's a wonderful tool, regardless of whether it's redevelopment or a lot of municipalities are now going with rehabilitation, where they're saying, we're, we're not so interested in the takings. We're, we're interested in just moving forward and doing very, very progressive things, whether it's for housing, whether it's for commercial development, or whether it's even for industrial. Well, if I found a site and I've done the planning, you know, I've, I've got the stakeholders on board, it's really all I need to do, because if I'm going to redevelop a piece of property in the city, obviously the infrastructure is there, and there weren't really any engineering issues, are there, David Gonkel? Yeah. Well, the, the engineering issues are probably the simple ones. Uh, the tough ones are the entitlements, and, uh, and actually, uh, just a few words about the entitlements, because for years, we've been pounding on Trenton and pounding on the DEP about how they're not cooperative and they're not doing the right thing. And while it, they certainly could be doing better, there are a few things that have happened in the last six months that have been very, very positive. Uh, on September, in fact, just this past week, on September 6th, the governor signed into law the uh, Permit Extension Act, which extends uh, permits for a period of up to four years. Uh, certainly any uh, permits that expired uh, after January 1st, 2007 are extended through July 1st, 2010, but again, they tolls. And, uh, and in fact, can run out as late as December 2010. So you could see up to a four-year permit extension, which has been incredibly positive for, uh, for the DEP, who hasn't really done a lot for us lately. Uh, but I did also want to point out one of the big challenges in, in the urban areas in, in, or is uh, site remediation. Uh, you, you can't find a site uh, in any urban area that's clean. Everybody knows that. And, uh, one of the big problems that we've seen, we have quite a few developers who are active in urban areas, but they've been getting bogged down again at the DEP. Well, the DEP has now uh, undertaken this licensed site professional program, and what that does is it mimics a, a program that's uh, in Massachusetts. Um, for those of you who don't know, the statistics in New Jersey, there are over 20,000 sites that are contaminated in one way or another, need to be remediated, and the DEP simply doesn't have the staff to do it. So through this program of licensed site professionals, what they intend to do is to actually allow consultants to become qualified in order to uh, review the cases on their own and actually sign off on them. Uh, one of the big challenges, though, is that as this, this legislation is currently written, the, um, it puts far too much liability on the licensed site professional, and frankly, it's just untenable and will not work. So the industry leaders right now are working with Trent to hopefully work that out, but I will tell you that if that comes to fruition, it's going to be a big boon for all the developers in the state of New Jersey because it will, in fact, streamline that process. Um, the other thing that many people may not be aware of is a year ago, Tom McKay, who heads up the land use uh, development section in Trenton, started up a new group under land use, which is the Bureau of, uh, Bureau of Urban Growth and Redevelopment. So what that group does is it's got some of his better personnel in it, and if you can get connected with Tom McKay and get into that particular bureau, uh, you will see an expedited review of your permits and approvals. So, you know, Doug, I will say there are a lot of things that we're not happy about with regard to Trenton, but they have done a few things in the past year that have been very, very positive for development, particularly in the urban areas. Um, there are still a lot of, uh, and, and in fact, earlier, uh, Joe Taylor mentioned it, and I think there's going to be a subsequent panel that talks about the, uh, the um, transit hub tax credit, which is another fabulous program. So, you know, it's incredible. I've really been amazed at what's happened in Trenton in the last year. I think they're finally responding to the recessionary times that we're in and really creating a better atmosphere for us to continue planning uh, during this recessionary period and hopefully start building in, in a few years.